Okay, thank you. Um, as, 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 as a peop, uh, speakers, I would like to start my talk by, uh, by showing that my sincere appreciations to kindly uh, provide me these opportunities to present our uh, recent studies here. Uh, I also would like to uh, congratulate the, uh, Professor Assos and Professor Nochis for these successful meetings. So we really enjoyed the, both scientific areas and the social areas uh, with the very great hospitalities. So thank you very much. So uh, what I'm going to talk today is the uh, immunologic cross-talk among the diet and the commercial floras and our host immune responses. So as we have already learned, uh, we are exposed to the continuously to the gut microbiomes together with the diet. So we should consider the triangle network among the diet or the nutrient and the microbiomes and host immunities. So in these issues, uh, my lab employed uh, several techniques, such as uh, metagenomic analysis to identify the commensal bacteria or commensal microorganisms, as well as the mass spectrometry analysis to identify the metabolomes, uh, uh, to metabolite derived from the diet, as well as the cross-talk between the commensal flora and the diet. So using these techniques, we are also doing the animal model experiment including the germ-free mice and not biote mice. And also, uh, we perform the several cohort studies uh, for the analysis of the Japanese healthy individuals living in Japan. So because uh, those data are so big, so we should employ the um, bioinformatics analysis. So using these systems, so we are now doing the how gut commercial flora and diet affect our host immune responses. So in some cases, so those um, cross talks is uh, cause some um, allergic or the inflammatory diseases. So one example is the dietary oils. So as you know, so we have the, uh, a lot of the dietary oils in the supermarket. <laughs> so there, it looks same, but the Contents is quite different. So different is determined by the fatty acid compositions like this. So this graph shows the fatty acid compositions in the um, plant-based dietary oils available in the supermarket. So as you can see here, so the old dietary oils has a different fatty acid compositions. And when we consider the oils, we always think the amount so excessive intake of the dietary oils is not good for the health. But uh, when we see that this graph, we suppose that the quality of the dietary oils, such as fatty acid compositions, is another key important factor in the control of the, our healthy conditions. So in these issues, my group has been interested in the how dietary fatty acid compositions affect our host immune responses. So one example is the linseed oils that is also known as the flaxseed oils. So we performed what we employed a food allergy models. So in the normal chow for the Japanese, uh, from the Japanese animal vendors, the uh, 4% of soybean oils are included. So it, when the mice were ma maintained with a, this normal chow, so those mice shows allergic diarrhea upon the they eating the um, egg proteins. But when we replace soybean oils with the linseed oils, so those mice do not show the any allergic diarrhea. So we did not change the amount of the oils, just to change the contents of the dietary oils. So suggesting that the quality of the dietary oils I mean, the fatty acid composition is the one of the critical factors in the control of the host immune responses and its association with the allergic and the inflammatory diseases. We then examine whether uh, what's happened in the uh, linseed oils groups. So one of the unique features of the dietary oils, uh, linseed oils, contains a lot of the alpha linolenic acid, ALAs, that is one of the major omega-3 fatty acid. So when we measure ALA amount in the intestinal compartment, when mice were maintained with linseed oils or soybean oils, 
So uh, consistent with the amount of the ALAs and the dietary oils, so linseed groups has the tremendous amount of the ALAs in the intestinal compartment. So we then try to examine whether these ALAs in the accumulated in the intestinal compartment. So to, ad to address these issues, we performed the imaging mass spectrometry analysis to see the distribution of the fatty acid in the intestinal compartment. And finally, we found that ALAs accumulated in the linseed group is uniquely uh, distributed in the lamina propria regions, where uh, there are so many immune cells present in the intestinal compartment. Then we then uh, apply the same systems to see the distribution of the linoleic, linoleic acid, that is the omega-6 fatty acid, that is abundant in the soybean oils. So unlike the ALAs, so linoleic acid, so omega-6 fatty acid, is preferentially observed in the soybean oils groups. So suggesting that at least the omega-3 fatty acid and omega-6 fatty acid, the fatty acid compositions in the dietary oils directly affect the fatty acid compositions in the intestinal compartment. And also, ALA is converted into the EPAs in your bodies. So consistent with the amount of the ALAs in the intestinal compartment, so EPA amount is strongly high in the linseed oils groups, suggesting that not only the fatty acid itself in the dietary oils, but its metabolite is also affected by the uh, fatty acid composition in the dietary oils. So it is well known that the EPA is a very healthy oils, and some of them is commercially available as a supplement. But several lines of evidence has recently revealed that the, some metabolite is further generated from the EPAs, and those metabolites are stronger activities in the control of the host responses, including the immune responses. So we perform the comprehensive analysis to identify which metabolites are increased in the intestinal compartment when mice were maintained with the linseed oils, and identify that this EPETEs, that shows the epoxide structures uh, compared with the EPAs, is abundantly increased in the intestinal compartment when mice were maintained with the linseed oils groups. To examine whether this uh, epox EPETE has uh, actual anti-allergic properties, we uh, obtained the synthetic EPETEs and applied to the, this food allergy models and found that this EPETE can prevent the development of the food allergies, both preventively and therapeutically. So these findings collectively suggested that so fatty acid compositions, especially the uh, omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acid, is directly affect the fatty acid compositions in our intestinal compartment. And those uh, fatty acid derived from the dietary oils is metabolized into the uh, biologically active EPAs, and then further metabolite in the more uh, stronger lipid metabolite, such as the EPETEs, which exert anti-allergic or inflammatory responses. So we then try to examine what's happened in the other tissues, such as the respiratory tract and the skin. And we are also interested in the uh, mother-infant communications through the breast, breast milk. So we are now doing the several experiment, but at least uh, we found that EPETE is very good for the control of the allergic responses, not only in the intestines, but also the respiratory tract and skin inflammations. So the linitis models, the number of the sneezings can be reduced by the treatment with the EPETEs. And we also employ the contact hypersensitivity models as the skin inflammations. So this skin inflammations is also ameliorated by the treatment with the EPETEs. So these data collectively suggest that so EPETE is a very good drugable materials which can control in the allergic or inflammatory diseases at the various tissues. Then 
So we are now trying to examine the effect of the EPETEs in the non-human primate systems. So our institute has the uh, non-human non primate centers. So using the crab-eating monkeys, we found that this lipid metabolite, so EPETE, is very efficiently inhibit or treat the skin inflammations in the non-human primate. So we also identify the receptors for the lipid metabolite, EPETEs. Uh, not only the mouse, so this lipid is nicely recognized by the human receptors. So we suppose that this lipid is very good for the control of the human inflammatory and allergic diseases. And another interest we found is that this EPA is metabolized by the, this EPETEs by the action of the cytokine from P450s. So it is well known that this P450 has a genetic polymorphisms. So based on these findings, we suppose that so some ones who has a very good enzymes, they can convert efficiently to generatory uh, biologically active lipid metabolite when they take their linseed oils or EPAs. But if the other peoples do not have the good type of the enzymes, they cannot provide the, this biological active lipid metabolite. Maybe no active metabolite is generated when they take the um, linseed oils or EPAs. So that suggests that the host factors, such as the enzyme types, may, be, may determine the, how these dietary oils affect our host immune systems. We also have to consider the commensal bacteria, because commensal bacteria also has the enzymes to metabolize the lipid. So the, now we are now evaluating the involvement of the commensal bacteria just in the name of the bacteria. But we should consider the function of the bacteria. So if the name of the commensal bacteria is different, but those have the same enzymes, maybe functions or their metabolite is the same, and that consequently affect the same effect in your healthy or immunologic conditions. And if we do not have the good enzymes and do not have the good commensal bacteria, what we should do? So we are now doing this um, chemical experiment to produce the, um, this EPETE as a GMP grade for the human trials. So one approach is that if we do not have the good enzymes or commercial bacteria, we can take this biologically active lipid metabolite as a medicine. So another approach is that we are now trying to isolate the bacteria from the um, picurus or nuttles. So some bacteria has the enzymes which can efficiently combat EPA to the APETs. So fortunately, we found the good bacteria from the one type of the nuttles. But the problem is that the taste is not good. So we are now trying to uh, make the good taste nuttles with the biological active lipid metabolite. So if you, uh, it is commercially available, I'm happy to provide all of you. <laughs> but uh, anyways, so we then examined whether these commensal bacteria are actually involved in the production of the, or the metabolizing the lipid metabolite. So I found that linolenic acid, that is omega-6 fatty acid, so they have the several metabolic pathways. So one pathway generated the arachidonic acid, that is a famous lipid metabolite. So when we compare the amount of the arachidonic acid in the intestinal compartment between the SPF mice and the germ-free mice, there is no difference in the amount of the arachidonic acid, suggesting that this pathway is a commensal independent pathway. On the other hand, the other lipid metabolite, this is a, has a biological functions to make the uh, strong tight junctions so the barrier function is enhanced by the lipid metabolite. So this lipid metabolite, we term the HYAs, is significantly decreased in the intestinal compartment of the germ-free mice, suggesting that this pathway is mediated by the commensal bacteria. 
So these findings collectively suggested that commensal bacteria as one of the important players in the control of the lipid metabolisms derived from the dietary oils. So we are now trying to identify the new chemical compound derived from the, was mediated by the commensal bacteria. So to address these issues, we are now doing the non-target metabolome analysis. And recently, we found that some lipid metabolite derived from the ALAs and generated by the commensal bacteria has a good anti-inflammatory activities, and also that can prevent the development of the diabetes. So we are now trying to how those lipid metabolites affect our host immune responses. So that is another one of our ongoing project. So the another exa examples of the dietary um, materials that affect our host immune responses is the vitamins. So of course, vitamin is the essential nutrient. So we have to take the um, vitamins from the diet. But also, commensal bacteria can produce the vitamins, and they also simultaneously consume the vitamins. So the type of the commensal bacteria affect the uh, necessity of the dietary vitamins. And we also found that the vitamins is very essential factors for the control of the host immune responses. But the, there are various types of the vitamins, but specific vitamins has a specific functions to control the specific immune responses. So using the vitamin A's and the vitamin B families, uh, my group has reported that Several vitamins has very important, play an important role in the control of the host immune responses. So one example is the vitamin B1s, that is known as the siamines. So in the textbook, so siamines, vitamin B1s, is very important essential cofactors in the control of the energy metabolisms. So the energy generation pathways is mainly mediated by the glycolysis as well as the TCA cycles. So in those pathways, vitamin B1s, essential cofactors for the pyruvate dehydrogenase and the 2 oxyglutarate dehydrogenase. Therefore, in the absence of the efficient or the appropriate amount of the vitamin B1s, that causes their energy, uh, impaired gener energy generations from the TCA cycles. So we employed imaging mass spectrometries to see the citrate, that is a one metabolite that originated from the TCA cycles in the intestinal compartment. So when the mice were maintained with a normal child, the intestinal tissues contains a lot of the citrate. But when the mice were maintained with a vitamin B1 deficient diet, those mice shows a very decreased amount of the citrate suggesting that in the intestinal compartment, so vitamin B1 deficiencies causes uh, uh, impaired energy generations. We then try to examine what happened in the intestinal immune systems in the vitamin B1 deficient conditions. So we focused on the intestinal IgA productions. So in the intestinal compartment, so pyre patches, there is a huge lymphoid tissues in the intestinal compartment that act as the uh, antigen induction site for the antigen-specific immune responses. Therefore, the M cells, that is a very specialized antigen sampling cells located on the epithelium, can take the bacteria, virus, or vaccines. The underneath of the epithelium, we found that a lot of the dendritic cells. So those dendritic cells can take the vaccines or pathogens and try to educate surrounding T cells and B cells to induce the antigen-specific IgA producing cells. And those educated cells emigrate out from that pyre patches and migrate it into the lamina propria regions, where there are so many IgA producing plasma cells present. And those IgA producing plasma cells produce the IgAs, and those IgAs is transported into the intestinal lumens as a secretory type of the IgAs. So in those pathways, we then examined what's happened in the absence of the vitamin B1 deficient conditions. So surprisingly, so uh, some mice do not show the any pyre patches. 
So the, actually, the size of the pile patches is getting smaller in the absence of the vitamin B1s. So the, the number of the cells, the naive B cells, that is abundant in the pile patches, that is a consistently decreased in the absence of the dietary vitamin B1s. On the other hand, when we examined IgA-producing cells in the lamina propria regions, we did not see that any significant differences in the frequencies and the distributions. We also found that the fecal IgA production was normal. So this data suggested that so, um, vitamin B1 dependencies is quite different between the pile patch B cells and lamina propria B cells. So the underlying mechanism is the energy metabolism is changed during the B cell differentiations in the intestinal compartment. So in the pile patches, there are so many naive B cells. So naive B cells obtain the energies preferentially or exclusively from the TCA cycles. But once those cells activated and differentiated into the IgA-producing plasma cells, the energy generations is shifted to the glycolysis and the TCA cycles. So that in the absence of the vitamin B1s, as I said, TCA cycle is impaired, leading to the um, no ATP productions from the TCA cycles, resulting in the cell death or the impaired proliferations in the naive T cells. But on the other hand, IgA producing plasma cells can obtain the ATPs, although the efficiency is very low, but those ATP is sufficient for the survivals and functions to produce the IgA producing uh, IgA productions. So those affect, is affected to the vaccine efficacies. So as I said, pile patches as an education site to acquire the antigen specificities and IgA committed B cells. So the vitamin B1 deficiencies causes the um, impaired lymphoid structure of the pile patches. So as a result, the IgA productions against oral vaccines is significantly decreased in the vitamin B1 deficient conditions. So the, it is well known that is a beriberi is the famous um, vitamin B1 deficient diseases. But uh, before developing these symptoms, we may think that the immune responses or immune systems is impaired in the vitamin B1 deficient conditions that lead to the high susceptibility to the infectious diseases and in terms of the vaccine development, we should consider energy conditions or nutritional conditions should be considered before uh, injection of the vaccines. So these findings suggested that vitamin B1 is very important for the appropriate immune responses. So what can we eat? So there is a eels and the pork has a lot of the vitamin B1s. But unfortunately, vitamin B1 is water soluble. So the amount of the absorption is very limited by the transporters. So we should take simultaneously garlic and leek that contains uh, alicins. So alicin is conjugated with the vitamin B1s to generate uh, alicyamines. That is a very good absorption and long-term retentions in the blood. So the we should consider what kind of the food should be eat together. <laughs> and simultaneously, some kind of the commensal bacteria and the fish and the, um, the, some kind of the mushrooms has the enzymes to degrade the vitamin B1s. So the, not simply is vitamin B1s supplementation is important, but we have to also consider what kind of the diet was it, what kind of commensal floras exist in the intestinal compartment that affect our absorption of the vitamin B1s and the subsequent immune responses. Then we are now doing the cohort studies. So what kind of the food affect our Japanese healthy conditions? So our institute has a cohort of studies containing the 1,000 healthy peoples those people provide the information of the genomic information and habit, including diet and exercise, sleep, and medicines. And they also measure the physical activities, such as med medical checkup and the physical fitness. 
So those peoples continue to uh, participate in our cohort studies. So the peoples uh, come to our institute every year and provide uh, these uh, habit and physical activities. And we are now measuring the uh, feces, uh, microbiomes, and metabolomes, and this also saliva and blood, uh, cytokines, and antibodies, blah, blah, blah. And those uh, all data are included into the um, um, database for the analysis of the association with healthy conditions and some commensal flora and the diet, habit, et cetera. So this uh, database is very useful and user friendly. So we can select, for example, pharmacutes and diet and uh, fitness. So that suggests, and we push the search, they uh, look for the, some um, factors uh, that is correlated with the pharmacutes. And fortunately, we found that some uh, dietary component are positively correlated with the pharmacutes and tend to be negatively correlated with the bacteroidetes. So using these systems, we are now trying to identify the several correlated pathways to control our healthy conditions and immune responses. So also, the, we are now collaborating with some uh, hospitals to obtain the data from the patient to compare the healthy conditions and the disease conditions and what kind of factors determine our healthy conditions. And uh, we are in the future, we will do the intervention studies to reduce the risk in causing of the some diseases. So finally, I would like to show that our, uh, my acknowledgement to the many collaborators uh, in the Japan and in the world, as well as uh, I would like to extend my uh, sincere appreciation to the uh, current my lab members. Uh, a lot of the talented uh, staff scientists and postdoc and graduate students are doing the, uh, this experiment. And we are always welcome to any type of the collaborations. So thank you very much for your kind attention. <laughs>